Peter's conversion mimics Jesus' resurrection. Jesus died physically, rose physically on the third day. Peter, Paul, Saul, was dead spiritually for three days and came to life on the third day. And he was found on the straight street. Okay, so here in Acts 9, 1 to 9, Acts 9, 1 to 9, Saul is on his way, Damascus, Syria, Damascus, to arrest Christians and have them killed for what he perceives to be blasphemy. A light shines at noon when the sun is at its brightest, knocks him down and blinds him. And that light is the light of Jesus. And then he hears Jesus's voice speaking to him in Aramaic. That's what we're told in Acts 22, Acts 26. He didn't know this was Jesus. He goes, why are you, Lord? I am Jesus. And then now notice verse 9. And he was three days without sight, neither ate nor drank. So he was spiritually dead, right? As a type of physical death. Notice three days, right? When does he come to life? Now watch here. Now, now. There was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he said, here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, rise up and go to the street called straight. You see, God has a sense of humor. Where is Saul now? He's on the straight street. He's now found the straight path to salvation. Prior to that, he was in error and lost. Now he's on the straight path, the straight street. And this is what Muslims pray. When they pray Surat al fatiha 17 times a day, guide us on the straight path. And here you have our Lord revealing, I am the straight path. I am the way, the truth, and the light. John 14, 6. No one can come to the Father except through me. And where is Saul? Where is Saul? He's on the straight street because he's now on the path to salvation. His path is straight because he's now been discovered by Jesus. God has a sense of humor, doesn't he? But I want you to see the sovereignty of God and how the Lord Jesus is almighty and oversees everything. And he can give people visions, multiple visions, multiple people at the same time. Because notice what he tells Ananias. He's telling Ananias what Saul is doing at that moment. And yet Jesus is physically in heaven in his glorified physical flesh. He's in heaven. And then he gives us his flesh in the Eucharist. But physically, bodily, he's in heaven. But because he's God, he oversees, sustains everything. He's aware of all things. Look, watch here. Look how deep. Rise up and go to the straight, the street called straight. Inquire at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying. Well, how did he know that? How did he know that he's praying? How do he know what house he's in and where? This is Jesus talking to him, right? How does he know? And now look how amazing, glorious, and majestic our Lord is. Look how glorious, amazing, majestic our Lord is. And he's real. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him. So he may regain his sight. Did you catch it? As he's talking to Ananias, the Lord has shown Saul a vision of Ananias. And he shows. Saul, the future. So the Lord is telling you the future. He's seeing and eyes come to him, lay hands on him, so that when it happens and his eyes are open, he's going to see, you're the man that I saw in a vision. You see the power of our Lord? He gives Ananias and Saul information and visions at the same time, and he shows Saul what will happen before it happens. Because Ananias is seeing the Lord and hearing him in a vision. And Saul is given a vision from the same Lord of Ananias, what he looks like, coming to him, laying hands on him so he can see. The Lord is showing Saul. So why? Why do you think the Lord's doing this? So that Saul doesn't think he's hallucinating. Saul doesn't think that it's his overactive imagination. Saul doesn't think he's deceived because God and only God can do this. Only God can do this because Saul has never met Ananias. And yet when Ananias shows up and he looks exactly the way he sees him in vision, he's going to know that Jesus is real. He is not dead. And he's no blasphemer. He truly is God. And I made a mistake in opposing him.
Now watch here. But Ananias answered him, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he did to your saints at Jerusalem. Now catch this. The Lord that's appearing in Ananias is Jesus. How do we know? Because Saul was harming, persecuting Christians, throwing them in jail. He wasn't harming those who worship Yahweh the Father. And so Ananias says, but Lord, he harmed your saints, those Jews in Jerusalem who are set apart for you, who worship you, he's harming them. So catch another thing. Jesus has holy ones devoted to him, who exist for him, who live for him, and where? At Jerusalem. The last place that you're going to find Jews who are zealous monotheists, who would rather die than worship a false god, being devoted to Jesus is in Jerusalem if Jesus was a faith. All right, watch here. Watch how deep it gets. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. Now notice this, another feature. Not only in Jerusalem does Jesus have holy ones devoted to him and worshiping him, he also has them in Syria who call on his name. Calling on his name is an act of worship. I've already mentioned to you in previous sessions. In the Old Testament, true believers call on the name of Yahweh and no one else. But here you have Jews and you have Gentiles already in both Jerusalem and Syria who are calling on the name of Jesus, something you do only for God. But the Lord said, by the way, Paul wasn't throwing Jews in jail who called on the name of the Father. He was throwing Jews in jail who were calling on the name of Jesus. But the Lord said to him, go. For he is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name, my name, before the Gentiles and kings and the sons of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Now watch. So Ananias departed and entered the house. And he laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord sent me. Who? Who appeared to me? The same one who appeared to you. Who? The Lord. That is Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you were coming so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he regained his sight and rose up and was baptized, and he took food and he was strengthened. Now, when did Saul come back to life spiritually? When did Saul live spiritually? When was he raised spiritually? On the third day. He was blind. Dead for three days until Ananias came, laid hands on him, and Paul got baptized, and he was made alive, raised to life spiritually on the third day, just like our Lord Jesus was raised on the third day physically. And when did this happen? On the third day, and where? On the straight street. God has a sense of humor, right? And here, let me show you Saul saying it. Saul is now recounting his conversion. Saul is now recounting his conversion when the Lord appeared to him. Now, a certain Ananias, a man who was devout by the standard law and well spoken of by all the Jews who lived there, came to me and standing near said to me, Brother Saul, regain your sight. And at that very hour, I regained my sight and saw him. And he said, The God of our fathers has appointed you to know his will and to see the righteous one. And to hear a voice from his mouth, you saw Jesus and his glorified physical body of flesh and heard him audibly. For you will be a witness for him to all men of what you have seen and heard. Now why do you delay? Rise up and be baptized. Wash away your sins. How? Not just calling on his name, but getting baptized in water. Confession and water baptism is what makes you spiritually alive, calling on his name. And this is why Saul could then say in Romans 6, 3 to 10, here you go, specifically verses 3 to 6, Romans 6, 3 to 10, or do you not know that all of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Now, do you make the connection with Saul? Jesus was dead for three days. Saul was blinded for three days. Jesus came to physical life on the third day, ushering the new creation. 
Saul came to spiritual spiritual life, was raised spiritually on the third day when he got baptized. So Saul experienced this in a way that more closely mirrored, mirrored Jesus' death and resurrection on the third day. Watch here. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptiz baptism into death. So as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of, of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin, for he who has died has been justified from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. But when? In baptism. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is to never die again, death no longer is master of him, over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. There you go. This is the gospel. 